1978, Josh Hartnett had a quiet and comfortable upbringing in St Paul, Minnesota, raised by his dad and stepmom. He was a talented sportsman playing soccer and football at high school, but was sidelined after a knee injury. It was his aunt who actually encouraged him to audition for the school production of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. He did and won the lead role. Bitten by the acting bug, he starred in high school plays, performed with the local youth performance group and landed his first paid gig, a Northwestern airline commercial. While working in a video store, he developed his love of film and vowed he would head to Hollywood. Josh moved to New York to study acting, but lasted only a year. By 19, he took on LA, his agent taking him on a whirlwind 50 auditions in under three weeks. It worked, and he quickly landed his first big break in the short-lived but critically acclaimed TV drama, Cracker. Incredibly passionate about his craft, he was so desperate to score a role on Dawson's Creek, he auditioned six times, but failed to get a part. This passion and drive is recognised by his fellow actors. He's, um very giving as an actor. He will always stay there for off-camera, even if he doesn't even say anything. He makes me feel very protected as a co-star, you know, as his leading lady, and, and that's lovely to work with an actor like that. After getting noticed in Cracker, he landed his first feature film playing Jamie Lee Curtis's son in the 1998 horror film Halloween H2O. And action, please. The film was a box office success and teenagers all over the world instantly fell in love with Josh, giving him the nickname Hotnet. On the rise as a Hollywood heartthrob, he then starred in The Faculty, playing a roguish cool kid fighting off alien teachers alongside fellow up-and-comer Elijah Wood. So what did Josh think of his new status as a horror movie star? I think movies can be a great, useful tool and uh, they frighten the bejesus out of a little kid sometime. I, I, more power to him. I love it. I'm glad I had that experience. While the faculty didn't do as well as expected, the movie's promotional tie-in campaign with Tommy Hilfiger, which included print ads of the smouldering Josh, solidified his teen heartthrob status. And the roles kept coming, with Josh's baby face winning many hearts, even the not-so-expected ones. Josh I can't stand. I loathe Josh. Uh, he reminds me of my brother Billy. Um, he's perfect to look at. He's thin. He's beautiful. Unhappy with his pin-up boy image, he managed to avoid being typecast when he appeared in Sofia Coppola's The Virgin Suicides. Josh's portrayal of Troy, a sexually precocious 1970s seducer, turned heads and received critical praise. Then director Michael Bay cast him opposite Ben Affleck and Kate Beckinsale in the supersized World War II epic Pearl Harbor. Costing a whopping $135 million to make, its scale was much bigger than anything Josh had experienced before. It was the first time I'd actually seen a 300-foot wide fireball coming right at me. It was huge. It was this big explosion, and we're running away from it, and it literally knocked us down. And uh, we jump behind the car, and all this debris comes over, and it was it was amazing. The wave of heat and everything. It, it just kind of I didn't expect it. Despite the big budget effects, the film received a lukewarm response. Regardless, it put Josh on the top of the hunk heap. After all, we do love a man in uniform. The military theme continued in Ridley Scott's Black Hawk Down, and Josh learned a lot while filming the controversial film about the US involvement in Somalia. They teach you a few little slogans like, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And that means, you know, just keep it, you know, keep it slow and smooth. If you're bouncing around, you can't see everything. And all we have to do is look like rangers. We don't have to be like them in real life. But when it comes down to it, we're all here on our own, just a bunch of guys and we're bought. It's kind of like being in the army anyway, so we started acting like them anyway. With two big budget war blockbusters under his belt, Josh was beginning to establish himself as an action star. And he had the scars to prove it. And then I go, bam! And then he keeps going and right there been pushed over in a car, I've been put on wires and kind of thrown, you know, had my head smashed into car hoods and things like that, but um, it's all in good fun. After the critical praise of Black Hawk Down, Josh may have wished the goofy romantic comedy 40 Days and 40 Nights was not the follow-up release, as it took away from his growing dramatic reputation. Then, after a year out of the spotlight, he teamed up with Harrison Ford in the buddy cop comedy Hollywood Homicide. It was at this point that he decided to move away from big blockbusters 
and focus on smaller, better quality films, even if it did shrink his paycheck. I, I like being involved in films that aren't, that you can't really equate to any other film. Josh's low profile roles in indie and independent minded films like Mozart and the Whale and Robert Rodriguez's Sin City further cemented his indie status. Robert just basically came to me and said, uh, I'm doing this graphic novel, putting it, making it into a movie. Uh, I don't have the rights to it. Uh, the writer isn't particularly um, fond of anybody doing it because it's his baby. And uh, I need somebody to come down and help me convince him to like let us go ahead with it. And uh, that was, and I said, of course. Despite his preference for interesting and challenging roles in indie films, he wasn't against the occasional mainstream movie, appearing in Wicker Park and The Wrong Man. Working on this film was probably the best experience I've ever had because these guys are all good friends of mine and we got to, you know, really drive each other and drive each other crazy and have a really creative time because we did it independently. And we, we all got to see the worst sides of each other and the best sides. And I think in the end it came out being one of those kind of exciting pieces of work because everybody was kind of ready for it the whole time or, or you know, they were open to the, the process. I felt so lucky that I had the chance to work with him because the chemistry that we had was so special and unique and also sort of the physical differences between us. I mean, he's a very tall, you know, guy who's very broad. He's got, you know, a great body and, and she's very small and so he, you know, she almost looks like she's half his size and so she's very fast and speedy and he's sort of like a little more, you know, he stays in one place and she sort of runs around him. And I think it's just a really sweet dynamic between the two of them. For me, it was, you know, it was a question of trying to create a character that was schlubbish enough, enough of a loser that you wouldn't expect in any way, shape, or form that he is, you know, in, involved in this, in this world that they, they reside in. While filming The Wrong Man, Josh made the most of the opportunity to work with such big name actors as Morgan Freeman, Bruce Willis and Sir Ben Kingsley. I learned a little something from watching every actor, which I've never felt, I've never been involved in a film where every actor was so talented and so good at their way of doing it that you, you can learn all these little tricks just by watching like Sir Ben, is a, you know, he's a genius. He, he's on a whole other level of acting that all of us just kind of stood back and just were just wowed by him. Uh, but you learn from him that you can act anything. You know, you can, you can put drama into anything. Josh continued to push himself out of his comfort zone. And in Brian De Palma's true crime drama, The Black Dahlia, it was clear that his choice to challenge himself on screen was finally paying off. Okay, Josh, you can need to go a little couple of steps closer to the bridge, Josh. I think Josh was well cast in that he has a very, he's an intense personality. He's got a lot going on inside, you know, but he keeps it real, like poker faced. Huh? Blanker! I've always been a, a big fan of his and uh, always thought he was a really talented young actor and you know of course I've been fortunate enough to work with a lot of older male leads very talented actors um, and to be able to work with uh, you know somebody who I really think is a, a real movie star and um, you know one of the few out there that's young and has got it um, that was very very uh, exciting for me. And Scarlett isn't the only young actress who's been impressed by and subsequently dated Josh. Over the years, he's also rumoured to have dated Michelle Williams, Kirsten Dunst, Sienna Miller, even Rihanna, to name but a few. A lover of the cinematic process, he's always been fascinated with what goes on behind the scenes and now co-owns a production company, Roulette Entertainment, having produced the films August and Nobody. Josh also sold a script to DreamWorks that was pretty well received, but never actually got made. Very determined, he is now working on a second effort. But funnily enough, he didn't always think he was cut out for the job. I'm not very organised and, uh, and I, I, I don't like doing the kind of menial... I would never be good at you know, keeping books and stuff like that, so... Uh, I don't think producers is I'm, what I'm cut out to do, but producing is what I'm cut out to do, but... Uh, I just want to be involved in every aspect of film. That's kind of the, the way I've always looked at it. So from when I first started, I was always kind of watching the directors kind of stay behind the camera, figuring out whatever, what everybody does. I kind of became friends with the crew and just, you know, 
just for future reference, you know, if I ever decide to make a film. Josh has worked hard to be taken seriously as an actor and is determined not to be seen as just another pretty face. In spite of this, he's been included in many lists. Hottest stars, most beautiful people, sexiest males, even hottest vegetarian. His handsome face has graced the cover of numerous women's magazines. So can you blame us for falling for his charm? All the women on the crew have to have this kind of like, they have this Josh thing. He's like a touchstone of feminine security on the set. All the makeup people and the hair people and the wardrobe people, they all have to have some kind of a, uh, they have to touch Josh every day. He gets touched a lot. And uh, he gives new meaning to the phrase touch up. Everybody wants to touch up Josh. Uh, it was just a joy, because with, with Josh, he's just, a great guy. I mean, it's uh, everybody says it when they who, who's worked with him, but uh, it's it's just true. He's just like an all-American, just great guy. With his undeniable good looks and a string of big-budget films early in his career, we were quick to label Josh Hartnett as just another teen heartthrob. However, through his love of acting, he fought this misconception, taking on challenging and experimental roles that won him respect as a versatile and talented actor. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all of the movies you know and the actors you love, broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better, on screen and at mnc.tv.